Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, so again, so so uh, th I'm going to kick this session off if I can use that football analogy. Uh, so uh, this is I look into the fundus and observe, and this is uh, the topic given to me was a grayish membrane in the macula. Uh, I wish I had financial disclosures, but I make very little money, and no no one's going to give money for this. So uh, they, 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 there can be lots of grayish membranes that one might see in the macula. We're not going to go into the details or the or the more exotic or the if I can use the word uncommon ones. I'm just going to limit my discussion to two common ones. Uh, I have just eight slides to show. And uh, this is, uh, I was told this was this is directed towards general comprehensive ophthalmologists and uh, maybe uh, some you know advanced postgraduates. So I've tried to keep it uh, relevant to that set of the audience. So this is just one case. Uh, this is the first of my two cases, a 44 year old female, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, who complains uh, with, she actually came to us with complaints of insidious onset blurring of vision in both eyes, left eye more than the right for the past three to four months. She wasn't very sure when she actually, uh, you know, had the blurring and she had, she had it for some time, uh, got her spectacles changed, didn't get too much relief and then came to us. That's what she had. That's what the, that's what I saw when I looked into the fundus and I observed. So as you can see, um, something's going on temporal to the fovea in both the eyes. Uh, you can see uh, whether you want to call it grayish or dull yellow or whatever appearance there, which is much more uh, prominent or more marked along with maybe a dull yellow center kind of uh, lesion in the left eye. Hence, uh, you know, the poorer acuity in the left, which also corroborated with the complaint. And, uh, you know, that's what we, what we saw, the interior segment and everything were unremarkable pupillary reactions. There was no evidence of intraocular inflammation. That's pretty much what the patient had. The periphery was normal. Uh, we went ahead with the OCT scan, right? That's what we do. Anything in the macula, especially affecting the uh, posterior pole, fovea, that's what you do. Oh, you, you, you know, the OCT is your friend. And, uh, you know, that, uh, those are the scans that we got. That, those are, you know, just your normal, regular, basic horizontal line scans which passing through the fovea. Uh, as you can see in the right eye, uh, as is shown by that, blue arrow there was this hyperreflective space with just that uh, you know uh, hyperreflective ilm left which can which you know people would like to call by different names could be the ilm drape could be you know uh, pseudocystoid spaces or you know uh, whatever you want to call it de a degeneration or whatever and in the left eye as is shown by that red arrow it was different uh, i mean you could have multiple scans through it i chose to you know display that one uh, just to show the difference, the heterogeneity between the two eyes, uh, with the disease being the same. Um, and, you know, instead of the uh, hyporeflectivity in the inner to middle retinal layers with the ILM drape, which is very well seen and highlighted by the blue arrow in the right eye, the left eye actually showed um, predominantly outer retinal hyperreflective material, which was, um, I mean, some, some might like to call it SHREM, subretinal hyper, uh, you know, reflective material, and that was that. Um, and and what corroborated with the fundus photos was that the pathology was predominantly temporal. Uh, OCTA is not required. However, why I chose to just show two slides of this is, I'll come to this at the end, just my last slide is on this. This is the OCTA of the right eye. And what it shows is in that, that, that you know, red arrow, I'm not going to go into detail, that it just clearly delineates that network of capillaries autolingic didactic vessels temporal to the fovea, uh, which corroborates with that grayish dull gray membrane or structure, which was seen temporally. Um, this is the left eye, which was which looked more advanced as far as the complaints of the patient were concerned, and also on the OCT, and it was corroborated by the OCTA, which is essentially dialysis and dialysis and geography. So this is what it shows. This is this is, um, the yellow arrow uh, shows you something similar to what you saw in the right eye, except that it's not just confined to the temporal area. It's, you know, a little more generalized, maybe not 360 degrees, but, you know, also extending superiorly and nasally. However, if you were to look at the um, outer retinal and the choreotacularis slab, so deeper down, as, is, as, as could be seen by the OCT, if you remember it from the first slide, there, it's not just all black in the outer retina. There's that hyperreflectivity, and you can there is also imprint of that in the choriocapillaris slab, which basically tells you that there is abnormal blood vessels there. And um, you know um, what this patient actually had was PFT 
or or maculate lenticular periphobic lenticular we're not going to get into semantics or you know what the terminology is and there are different stages uh, you essentially would want to observe the right eye closely the left eye might want might warrant treatment it's just something that should be kept in mind insidious onset um you know um, bilateral disease um ha- can have asymmetric presentation as far as stages staging is concerned and generally uh, have vision uh, you know to the tune that 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 they have in the left eye unless of course you go on to develop a macular CN- uh, sorry a massive cnvm coming quickly to my case 2 uh, which is is in stark contrast to the first case this is a uh, considerably elderly a uh, female 78 year old who pre- who presented with sudden onset metamorphopsia and decrease in vision in her left eye and she was very categorical this is five days educated smart lady and acuity of 618 parts and you can again see something which to the cursory exam might look a lot like uh, what you saw in the right eye of the previous patient uh, you know you can see some vessels going into where there is some retinal thickening if, if it can be made out and our friend pops up right there and you can see that um you know the oct uh, shows you that there is a pigment epithelial detachment uh, it's multi layered and you if you know that arrow actually shows um, some hyper reflectivity below it i'm not going to get into um, fancy oct terms the red arrow also shows that there is some uh, subretinal fluid which is at the edge of that and that might be the cause for the patient's recent onset metamorphopsia it's it's a no brainer to diagnose to have a left eye wet amd active cnvm counseled with anti vegf injections i just have two more slides to go uh, i know this is not about uh, sorry sir just go ahead sir go ahead i'm just finishing in one slide sir if i've overshot the time this is finishing in one time in um so this is what the patient had got one injection you can see some resolution of the fluid however since we're talking about gray lesions um the next slide might be a little tougher but you know since it was gray i just thought the patient went on to receive the second injection but you know following that complained of drop in reading vision and a central and a central scotoma 10 days later that's what the patient had that's the photo you can see that gray lesion there some hemorrhage in the center that's the autofluorescence um you know long story short that's the you know baseline and that's what the patient unfortunately developed it also looks gray and in the back of the eye but the retinal pigment epithelium has actually ripped there that's not something you see very commonly but since we were looking at gray membranes in the macula and the only two diseases i was look, look you know were wanting to highlight what pft and cnvm i just thought that this case might that, that that you know this slide might just bring out that you can also have uh, you know rpe tear which can either happen spontaneously or more commonly treatment Thank you.